She's gonna walk directly up to the box. She's gonna pull the little handle. She's gonna open up the door. As soon as this door is opened up, one of the alarms is already going off. It's a silent alarm that mom will not hear. When she places baby inside the box, another alarm goes off that she will not hear. When she shuts the door, she won't be able to reopen the door. The door actually locks once baby's placed inside. The baby can only be retrieved from the inside of the fire station, or in this case, the inside of the hospital. Inside, you'll see a green light that is always green if the, there is no baby in our box. Once there's a baby placed in our box, you'll see a green plus a yellow orangish light because the beam from across has been broken. After mom places her baby in one of our safe haven baby boxes, one of the staff or the EMTs or the paramedics or the nurses will come down to the baby box. They're gonna open the inside door. They're gonna grab the bassinet and they're gonna head for the emergency room. When you hear Monica Kelsey speak, her enthusiasm, her warmth, it will rub off on you. She has a beautiful personal story of how this all, all got going. This is the third one now in Arkansas, Ro Benton, Rogers, and now Springdale. Jonesboro is opening one tomorrow, and there's talk of a few other cities too. So, But Monica Kelsey, for her, this is number 61. She's got oh. them going all over the country. <laughs> God bless you. We just welcome you. Give her a Razorback welcome, Monica Kelsey. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. This is a historic day for Springdale. This has never been an option here before, and now there is an option for women in the city of Springdale and beyond. Uh, my name is Monica Kelsey. I'm the founder and CEO of Safe Haven Baby Boxes. We're the only organization in America today that is saving babies in boxes at fire stations and hospitals in multiple states. And it's a good feeling when we get a call from like we did last May from Chief Ford in Benton, Arkansas that said, hey, Monica, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you and tell you this, but we had a baby in our box. I said, yeah, it's probably a good idea for you to let me know that, Chief. <laughs> so. So uh, that little baby uh, was a little boy that was placed in their box on May 24th last year. He was adopted in December uh, and just as beautiful as, as I'll get out. I can't wait to meet him. I've seen pictures of him and that truly is a, is a good day. Um, like Sheila said, this is the 61st box in the country. And I, every time I think of that, I'm like, why is there only 61 boxes? It's because we're just getting started. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited because we're, we're pushing in multiple states. Abandonments in the states that we're in are going down. Babies in our boxes are going up. And uh, we're flipping the tide from where babies were left in dumpsters and trash cans are now being left in secured places and at the side of a firehouse in a hospital. Um, we have had, since November of 2017, we've had 10 babies in our boxes in the last uh, three years and it's a good feeling it's a good feeling Indiana went from about two abandonments per year in our state to zero and uh, now we have a record number of babies coming into our boxes and uh, and that truly is a blessing to tell you a little bit more about myself and why I'm so passionate about safe haven baby boxes and why I started this organization is I have to take you back uh, quite a few years to August of 1972 when a young 17 year old girl was brutally attacked and raped and left along the side of the road. And this of course was when abortion was illegal in our country, even in the cases of rape and incest. This 17 year old girl was strong enough to press charges against the man who had raped her and he was arrested and he was charged. And if that wasn't the worst of it, when she finally felt like she was getting some normalcy back, she finds out she's pregnant. At the advice of her mom, she found herself in a back alley abortion facility in October of 1972 in Columbus, Ohio. And while standing in front of the man that was gonna take her child's life, the 17 year old girl was strong enough to say, I can't do this. And she left that facility and she never looked back. She was hidden for the remainder of the pregnancy and gave birth in April of 1973 and abandoned her child two hours after that child was born. And that child was me. So my biological father is a rapist and I don't even know my ethnicity but I'm still a human being and I still have value and my life isn't worth less simply because of the way I was conceived and how I was unwanted at birth. But I, today I stand on the front lines of this movement making sure that every mother has a safe option to protect her child 
so that child's life can be beautifully adopted and possibly one day change the world. I'm so grateful to announce today that uh, my book is now available on Amazon. It is called Blessed to Have Been Abandoned. Uh, it's the story of the baby box lady. I mean, who doesn't like that title, right? <laughs> so you can get it on Amazon. It's $9.95. It's called Blessed to Be Abandoned, but it is the story of the journey of taking pain and turning it into purpose. Yes. And that is what I have done. And, uh, and I'm so honored for Springdale to join us in this mission. Um, and, you know, the first baby that gets placed in this box, it'll be a great day for you as well as a great day for me and for Chief Irwin. So God bless you. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're so honored to be in a, in a pro-life city like Springdale, Arkansas. God bless you. Heavenly Fathers, I bow before this crowd today and before your throne of grace, seeking mercy in our hour of need and the grace that it's going to take to make sure this box is fulfilling what it's intended to do. I am emotional, Lord, as I think of the times in the past when I was involved in babies that had been abandoned, that had been turned over from moms that were just scared and didn't know what else to do. And then I thank you, Lord God, that you are a creator of this world and you never intended for us to get to this point where sin has brought us to where we have to set up ways of protecting children when moms and dads don't step up and be parents sometimes, but at the same time, Father, we live in a world that is so confusing at times. And choices are made, Lord, that uh, don't always turn out for the best. And yet you've given us a mayor representatives in our state, city council, a fire department that's willing to step up and do something about it. So now, God, we do ask that you would bless the spots, that you would bless each and every person that has had anything to do with it being here. But above all, Father, let us bless you. Let us bless you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who took care of the one problem our world has, and that sin. And through your death on the cross, Father, you met the need that each and every one of us had, and that's forgiveness. We thank you for that, and we love you. We ask you to continue to bless NWA Respect Life, and Sheila, as she steps forward and, and continues to do these things that bring you such honor and glory. Thank you for the cooperation and the way that you just bless her and bless this organization. Now bless Safe Haven Baby Box all over America. That your name will be glorified. That babies will be saved. That mamas could find hope. That's what you promised us in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. When you said, you know what your plans for us are. You know what you want for us. You want to give us a future and a hope. And so if we seek you with all of our heart, we will find you and you will hear our prayer. So hear our prayer today, oh God, yes. in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Life goes on